Hey, this is Digital by Computing. We're looking at the Netgear ReadyNAS 314 storage solution. So this unit by Netgear allows you to have up to four hard drives, totaling up to 40 terabytes of storage, which is incredible, uh, and up to 112 terabytes in, in total with expandable units, with expansion units. So you can actually buy expansion units to this to join them all together and have up to 112 terabytes of storage. But on its own, this unit will let you have up to 40 terabytes, uh, which is fantastic for this small unit. So the unit itself is very, very slick. It's all in the black. You can see my hand size. It's essentially the size of my hand in length. So it is not a very large unit. You've got a nice door on the front with an LCD display down the bottom, which is available from here, which shows you the state of the unit, what's it, you know, what the unit is doing, that sort of thing. Uh, you've got an eSATA, you've got a backup plug there, and you've also got a power button to turn it on. On the front, as I mentioned, you've got four expandable hard drives. These are internal hard drives. You just push down and you remove the hard drive. These are SATA hard drives. Uh, and the great thing is you can actually use SATA and SSD drives in both two and a half and three and a half inch setups, which is very, very good. So you don't have to use these big ones, but this is a particular Western Digital two terabyte, but you can actually use smaller ones to make the unit lighter. So the unit can be a little bit heavy when you're using these big drives, but if you're using smaller drives, two and a half inch, even SSDs, um, the unit will be considerably lighter. You can set up your multiple types of RAID as well. So the good thing about this unit is it has hourly protection of files in a file server environment. Uh, there's a whole bunch of applications. So the unit itself is running its own Netgear software, allowing you to go through and install applications, install certain server applications as well. We're gonna cover that later on in this video and show you how to configure and how to set up certain apps on your unit. So let's look at the back of the unit. So the back of the unit has some very cool features. It's got a dual ethernet, all right? This is a gigabit ethernet, so you can actually have redundancy on your network points. Set up two different IP addresses across them. You've got a couple of USB 3s, you've got a SATA, you've got a HDMI out, and then you've got your power itself. It also comes with a very powerful fan and a handle which allows you to lift up the unit. The sides of the unit have got your air vents on either end, you got the top, you got an air vent as well. Now the great thing about this is you can actually take out your screws if you want to and update the RAM as well. So the unit itself doesn't come with too much RAM but you can actually double the capacity of your RAM quite easily by buying your own stick of RAM and putting it inside the unit, all right? So that is the outside of the ReadyNAS. Excellent sturdy unit by Netgear. There are many other competitors out on the market but this one is a great, uh, great unit. It's small, it's compact, very easy to use, very easy to set up, and it has a whole bunch of features and software uh, that we're gonna go through. So we've logged into our Ready NAS by Netgear. Uh, you'll set a standard IP address, which will be uh, generally 192.168.1.254 or one. Uh, I've gone ahead and changed it and made it my own. IP range, but let's look at through the basic features. You've got the, you know, some basic stuff here, the name, the model of your ready NAS, the serial, what firmware it's up to. You can go ahead and update the firmware directly here. And you've got a list of all the applications that are installed, uh, a summary of your, um, of how much space you have free, how much capacity you've got. So this is 5.44 terabytes in total. Uh, you can see your volumes, which is what we looked at. So there's four two terabyte SATA hard drives. Uh, whatever RAID configuration you've got in here, which is RAID 5 for me, you can go ahead and change that to a RAID 5, a RAID 10, a RAID 1, RAID, RAID um, 0. Um, and you can you know, create double RAIDs, that sort of thing, uh, depending on what configuration you've got. You'll see here my total, my total t uh, data, how much snapshots I've got, uh, and how much free I've got. You've got performance charts as well, performance on literally everything on the hard drive, 
um, utilization, the temperature, how it's all functioning, the serials of your hard drives. You can do some more settings, you can check through logs, and you can also see power as well and actually adjust your power when you want the units to be turned on, turned off. UPS, if you're using a UPS system for, for backup power, wake on LAN to power the unit on automatically as well. So that is under your system tabs, under shares, you've got all the shares that you've created, uh, what sort of protocols, what um, you know, what protocol you want to use, SMB, NFS, AFP, uh, depending on if you want to be sharing with you know Apple, uh, ESX, like VMware, uh, your Windows shares, um, snapshots if you have that configured, how much is consumed in each share, etc. You can then go likewise and navigate through each of those and go th and browse through the content, create new shares quite easily. You've got iSCSI if you want to be using the block level. Um, connectivity for iSCSI, you can create LUNs, you can create groups of LUNs, and then assign those LUNs to a environment. So for example, a VMware, a Citrix, a um, Hyper-V environment as well, has block level LUNs as well. You can create accounts, you've got multiple users, groups, cloud users, things like authentication, if you wanna uh, you know, bind it to AD, that sort of stuff, all right? So you can do Active Directory, accounts, um, default users, that all that sort of stuff. Uh, network, you've got, you know, you, as we saw, we've got two ethernet ports on the back. If only one is connected to your network, you'll only have one of the ethernet ports. If they're both plugged in, they'll both show up. You can go in and configure the IPs, um, the subnets, the DNS, everything there. You can create routes as well, directly from your Netgear unit. We'll leave apps for now, we'll come back to it. Go into cloud, you've got a whole bunch of, these are built-in applications that come with your ReadyNAS. Uh, Ready Cloud, uh, ReadyNAS Replicate, you can sync it directly with Dropbox, all those sort of things. So that is actually a very, very cool feature of the ReadyNAS is these applications that let you do extra protection and management of your NAS remotely quite easily. And then you've got things like backup. You can create different backup jobs to automatically back up your units. Uh, you can sync it with Time Machine, which is Apple's um, feature for their backups. So you can create a Time Machine share, essentially, username and password, how big you want your Time Machine share to be. And then from within your Time Machine on your Mac, you can configure and point to your Time Machine backups directly to your Ready NAS. You can go to the ReadyNAS community, which will link you to the community. You can change your passwords and your language as well. All right, in applications, this is the great feature about the ReadyNAS, is the amount of applications that are available to run on your ReadyNAS. Now your ReadyNAS is running a version of Linux in the background. So you can actually SSH directly into your device and do a lot of command line stuff if you're game enough to do that. Be very careful with what you're touching inside your Linux interface if you do want to do that, because uh, you could potentially break things if you're not familiar with the structure of Linux. Um, so be very careful of that. So uh, applications, as you can see, there's a whole range of applications for a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you've got firewalls, you've got statistic stuff. You can run, um, you know, media servers, FTP clients, My uh, MySQL. PHP, you can run WordPress, um, you can run a whole bunch of stuff, right? SMB share, transmission, if you want, you know, torrent type of management, VPN servers, everything like that. Now, the great thing is you can actually go ahead and upload and go to certain websites that may not be showing up in here because the applications that are in here have essentially been approved by Netgear to allow them to be shown in here. But there are a whole range of other applications that you can install on your ReadyNAS by downloading them and uploading them directly to your NAS and installing them that way. You can easily go into Google and type in ReadyNAS applications if you wanna find a particular sort of application. To install the app, it's literally just clicking install and that's it. You go into the install apps and you'll see the applications that are installed, which in my case, I've only got just the two, which is the Plex Media Server and the ReadyNAS Photos 2 environment, okay? But there are a whole range of um, apps available, which makes the process of managing this environment very, very easy. So that is a summary of the ReadyNAS, a fantastic NAS solution, uh, a whole range of features, a whole range of apps that you can install onto it 
highly, highly, highly would recommend the Ready NAS by Netgear. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to Digital Bike Computing for a whole bunch.